Hello and welcome to another episode of the Envisioneering Exchange, the podcast where industry leaders discuss the most important topics in building an urban efficiency. I'm your host, John Sheff, Dan Foss's Director of Public and Industry Affairs. You can subscribe to our show on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, SoundCloud, or wherever it is you get your podcasts. Now, today we have Michael Strabolas, Dan Foss's Business Development Director for Digital Infrastructure. And I'm really excited because Michael and I are going to discuss uh, data centers and data center cooling and what are the latest trends and why this is such an important topic today in HVAC. So, Michael, thank you very much. Welcome. Thank you, John. Nice to see you again, um, virtually, of course. Yeah, great. No, I, I, I know it's... Uh, it's uh, it's been quite a year, but I'm glad to at least see you virtually. I'm glad to have you on the show. So let's jump into it. Um, you know, data center cooling has really come into the focus the last few years. Of course, everybody knows data centers are becoming more more prominent and prevalent. They're popping up everywhere, and we and we need uh, more capacity in this area. But um, we see more focus on it here, heading into 2022. Tell us a little bit about the industry and and what uh, what why it's so important. Well, the the importance of data center cooling cannot be overstated because without it, all the IT equipment in the data center would, of course, overheat and would cut out. So basically what is happening in a data center, John, is that electricity that drives all the IT processes generates some heat. So at the very basic level, this heat is due to the internal resistance losses generated by the physical materials that uh, electronics and electrical equipment inside a data center are made of. And this heat needs to be removed um, in order to keep the systems running and preventing uh, downtime. Yeah, I mean, it, it, these these data centers are running 24-7, 365, right? So there, there, is, no, there is no time when, when this cooling is not needed. Exactly. And, uh, and in the data center uh, language, uh, Data center cooling uh, systems are critical components in maintaining what is called uptime. So yeah. it's 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 um, keeping uptime, it's uh, preventing downtime, and uh, and of course there are other things and other factors that uh, that come into play. And one of the one of these factors is increasing processing power of the chipsets inside. Uh, the servers and the and the racks in in data centers and the demand for cooling is even greater. So as the as the the data centers advance, as the technology gets greater, there's more heat producers, more power being used, and there's the there's need for more cooling. Um, I mean that makes sense. What are the the latest trends here? Tell us a little bit about where the industry is today, where it came from as far as uh, the cooling technology, and kind of where you see it going in the future. Well. Um, the, the the pressure on engineers to come up with better ways of cooling is on. And um, they not only have to, to design for increased operational efficiency and reduced power consumption, but they also have to design for decreased carbon emissions inside the data center and the data halls. So importantly, also cooling systems have to, to function at low and high IT loads, as well as all the different ambient conditions surrounding the data center where they, you know, the data centers are geographically located. So the the role of the of the of the cooling system in the data center is huge. As far as trends, um, we have the green transition driving sustainable data centers. That is one trend. The other one is changes in cooling techniques and and the third one th this is this is what i see is increasing power density that i already referred to so these are three key trends that i see but there are others of course um, regarding sustainability there are multiple components to it and in in data centers we measure power usage efficiency water usage efficiency carbon usage efficiency. So all these all these factors play into sustainability. And one, one key trend that we see, John, is uh, the trend to switching to low GWP and low density refrigerants. Obviously, we've seen this front trend all over the, the HVAC industry, but, um, you know, as in this, as a sector kind of emerges, I think it's going to be even more important. Refrigerants um, are, are good for this sort of application. Um, 
There are the low density refrigerants, uh, one, two, three, four Z, E, Z, D, and, uh, and the like. Um, and of course, uh, Danfoss has compressors and flow controls and heat exchangers uh, ready for uh, data center cooling systems lo- using uh, these low GWP refrigerants. Another, another trend that I started mentioning before is uh, free cooling. And uh, free cooling techniques uh, use, um, let's say, a, a liquid that is available in the area from a lake or a river or something like that to, to provide uh, through gasketed plate uh, heat exchangers and other arrangements, free cooling to the data center. And then there are evaporative and adiabatic uh, cooling techniques um, that are used in data centers where Danfoss has high pressure pumps and misting nozzles. Um, and together with with uh, our friends at Danfoss Drives, we complement these applications for variable speed drives used in pumps and and fans that are in the data center halls. Yeah, I think variable speed is really interesting because on the face of it, it looks like there's constant load, right? You're you're always cooling, but the ambient temperature can change and, and the load can change in these applications. Yeah, the load profile in data center changes um, depending on the time of day, of course, and the season, um, except for maybe some very high, uh, not high, but uh, very um, large data centers, hyperscale data centers have more or less a constant load. And uh, uh, this this is where you have very large chiller plants using, uh, using multiple uh, turbo core, for example, oil-free variable speed compressors, as well as other technologies. Now, we were just talking um, uh, on the show um, a little while ago about heat recovery. And I, of course, these these data centers put off a huge amount of heat. Do you see an opportunity, at least in the U.S., to, to utilize uh, this heat source? The, um, the opportunity, of course, like you say, for capturing and reusing the heat is there. Uh, Danfoss has energy stations for heat reuse. Uh, where there is a district energy uh, grid nearby. So we have to build some of these district uh, uh, heating and cooling uh, grids in, in, in urban centers in the United States or in neighborhoods in the United States um, together with the data centers. So as data centers are popping up, these district energy plants need to pop up as well as part of the uh, infrastructure. Yeah, I think that's really important. Of course, we we just don't have that district energy uh, infrastructure in this country like they do in some other places, say Europe. But I think you're right. As we build out, you know, these data centers, particularly the large ones, I think it's it's key to be able to to reuse that heat. Uh, but that kind of gets us to our our last point here. You mentioned you know hyperscale data centers. Is that where you see things going, getting bigger, or do you see these data centers going to what they call you know edge computing, smaller installations? Yes. Yes. Well. The way that I see it is that data centers are growing across each and every dimension. And and you have edge computing with small data centers, and then you have containerized modular or prefabricated data centers where deployment speed and mobility are the driving factors. Then you have large enterprise and colocation sites for computing, storage, uh, networking, and then you have the hyperscale sites that are driven by massive changes in how we do business, um, uh, entertainment, and uh, and whatnot. So uh, all of them are growing at fantastic speeds, and all of them have their own needs for cooling infrastructure, whether it's self-contained cooling for uh, edge uh, data centers or crack and cry units for uh, medium-sized data centers or large chiller plants for uh, for hyperscale data centers where you can also have heat reuse. As we move forward, however, there is no doubt that uh, 5G networks, the need for speed, uh, bandwidth limitations to handle all the data from the rapidly rising number of connected devices at the edge are pushing for processes um, to handle the data at the edge 
and act on the data where it's generated. And that is also pointing to the proliferation of edge computing. So uh, I see growth across every area and especially edge computing, which is which is uh, going to become really, really v- strong after 2025, I believe, and beyond. But we have to be very clear that a lot of these technologies for cooling, whether it's free cooling or low GWP refrigerants or um, district uh, uh, energy stations and all that, um, we have to be very clear that specifications must be rewritten in greater detail to the subsystem or component level by data center operators and consulting engineers in order to meet the cybersecurity uh, guidelines, the uptime and decarbonization uh, uh, levels that consumers have come to expect from uh, data centers. Yeah, and I think that's so important. There's just so many, um, you know, regulations and so many standards that come into play with these with these applications, um, and and it all impacts the cooling, right? And it's not a one size fits all um, uh, cooling cooling method. You know, each of these different uh, data centers, of whether they're they're hyperscale or edge or, or somewhere in between, all of them have different cooling needs. Exactly, exactly, and these these needs change over time, and of course, uh, we have to to adjust uh, the uh, the cooling specifications, like I mentioned before. Yeah, I think it's fascinating, but you know, I think that's a great place to end, Michael. Thank you so much for joining us. This was a great conversation. Uh, any last thoughts? You're welcome, John. Thank you. And uh, the last thought I think is that uh, we are heading into more secure more reliable and more sustainable facilities than ever. And the technology is already there. Yeah. And I think that's like, like so many of these technologies we talk about, uh, the technology is there and, and, and we just have to, um, you know, catch up with it and, and, and put it into play. Well, thanks so much. I really appreciate your time, Michael. Great conversation. And that's it for this episode of the Envisioneering Exchange. Again, I'd like to thank my guest, Michael Strabola, Stan Foss's uh, Business Development Director for Digital Infrastructure. Um, and don't forget to subscribe to the Envisioneering Exchange on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, SoundCloud, or wherever it is you get your podcasts. Lastly, if you enjoyed this episode, please don't forget to rate, review, and share it with your network. Thanks again for listening. Uh, and we'll talk to you again next time.